open-minded. Just handing him out today, presenting a slightly alternative perspective. A slightly alternative perspective? Well, slightly is probably an understatement. I was talking to an atheist Saturday about it. <laughs> yeah. And just to be clear, you may have seen the guys with the signs and the nasty, abusive tone of voice across the street. Not with them. I rebuke them and berate them for what they're doing. I don't in know. In case you saw them. I didn't even see. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair there's, enough. there's so many people with signs and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, I was born in a, in a Texas Southern Baptist home. Oh, yeah. I believe in Christ, period, and nothing's going to change that. Uh -huh. And I've told people, I said, you know, the Southern Baptist Church may have left me. Yeah. And my belief in faith in Christ, but Christ. Oh, it's for you. It's for you, man. I don't want. But Christ remains with you always by your side. He doesn't go with the church. He stays with the faithful, and uh, that's just a fact. Um, so it's not going to change me. Anybody can carry signs. I mean, the Democratic Party hasn't changed me any, so... What, what, did, what did you mean by the Southern Baptist Convention has left you? Because I think that too, but I'm, we may they, mean different things by that statement. Well, they, they left the gay community lock, stock, and barrel, period. I mean, and I just heard the president of the Southern Baptist Convention today. That's the most hate-filled SLB I've ever heard in my life. He's like, he's You're, as bad to me as Rick Santorum and Ted Cruz. Yeah. Oh. Man, you I, I would punch the sucker out if he came up to me right now and tried to preach the word of Christ because he no more knows the word of Christ than a hill of pow crap to me. And I'll tell you one thing. My church, my home church that I grew up in, we had pastors. All five pastors went to be presidents of Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. Really? And all five of them had pastors that had been my home pastor. I would sat in the pew wow. Sunday after Sunday. I had listened to these men preach the word of Christ. They knew what they were talking about. They were intelligent and educated in theology more than the world. And they became presidents of the Seminary. Then we got one from Albuquerque, New Mexico. He would, I don't know how he did this. He got ill. He couldn't even preach for three months. They didn't know if he was going to live. He came back and preached two sermons and got elected president of the Southern Baptist Convention. We were all sitting there. How did you pull that off? Is this, is this a while ago? Is this a, yeah. the, oh, yeah, this, what they call the resurgence? This was when he became the first fundamentalist of the Southern Baptist Convention. He, did, okay. he is the turning point where we went from Southern Baptist to fundamentalist, period. And it's been fundamentalist ever since. So you think the SBC is too conservative? The SBC? Sorry, the Southern Baptist Convention, it's too conservative? Oh, they're not just too conservative. I think they've left Christ and gone over over the cliff on on their conservatism. They, 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 they've blown it right out of the proportion. Why, because they call homosexuality sin? They won't, they won't mince words about just that. Anything with the gay community, they're absolutely hate-filled to the max. Even way? the Pope has a better has a better understanding of gays than the Southern Baptist Convention. In what way? Is it because they oppose the, the gay marriage? In any way, any way. Gay marriage, marriage, any form. If gay you say the word gay, gay and a Southern Baptist pastor... It's over. They don't even want to talk and discuss it anymore. Yeah. I mean, fair and enough. That's no, probably true. And like, I'm through with them. Like, I'm, seriously, gay marriage is like straight up against the Bible, though. Like, why would we? Why would we? Gay respect? marriage is not against the Bible. Sure it is. Where in the Bible do you find it's against gay marriage? In Matthew chapter 19. Would you like to look at it with me? Sure. All right. Now I had a Bible earlier, and uh, a gay person, after I after I said uh, saying very, in a very loud voice, "I love you," he had knocked it out of my hands. So um, I'm not feeling the love too much, but I've got this little thing in my jig right here. Uh, I won't knock it out of your hands. I appreciate that. So I don't, don't attack people for having beliefs and faith in what they believe in. My name's Alan. What's your my name? name's Rick. Rick. With all due respect, Rick, you said earlier, you said a few minutes ago that if Ronnie Floyd were here, you would punch him right in the face. I would probably knock him out because he and I wouldn't get along for two seconds. All right. The man is not preaching the word of Christ. He's preaching the word of hate. Well, I, I think he's not preaching the word of Christ either, but I think he's preaching the word of self-interest and Pharisaism. Well, so Matthew, Matthew chapter 19, 
So it says, uh, Pharisees came up to, te to test Jesus. Is it lawful to divorce one's wife for any cause? He answered, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made the male and female? He said, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother, hold fast to his wife. The two shall become one flesh, so they're no longer two, but one flesh. <clears throat> what therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. They said to him, Why then did Moses uh, command one to give a certificate of divorce and send her away? He said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for immorality and marries another commits adultery. So that's that's what he's talking about. He says a man shall leave his father and hold fast to his wife. Yeah, he's got to hold he's on to his wife. Marriage. Yes. This he's defining marriage. He's got his, his husband holding on to his wife, but that yeah, doesn't wife. say marriage. His wife. And it doesn't say you can't have gay marriage. It says that it says that marriage is between a man and a woman. And it was always so. Way from Genesis chapter 3 it was that way. Or Genesis chapter 2. Uh, Sorry, one. Of course, one. marriage was always between a man and a woman. But then why did it have to become a sacrament of the church? Well, I don't agree with that necessarily. I think it's a covenant between a man and a woman. But it's, a what do covenant. You... it's a covenant between a man and yeah. a woman. And I think it's a covenant between a man and a man or a woman and a woman. Well, that doesn't make any sense. What does it makes Romans... as much sense to me as between, saying it's only between a man and a woman. But the Bible says it. We just looked at it. The Bible says, yeah, in a way it says that. But it doesn't say that it's holy matrimony. It doesn't. It didn't have, it didn't it have to say It says a man shall though. leave and can cleave to his wife and they'll should become one flesh. That was marriage. Yeah, they Genesis have, chapter one. That's not marriage. That is a, so becoming a man and that's wife. That's the joining marriage. of a couple for procreation, which they needed then. You're twisting about terms and you're trying to like you're trying to escape, but there is no escape. No, the there's not an escape. I, I won't escape from it. I'll tell it flat out like I believe you it is. You don't believe the Bible. I believe the Bible. You, you don't believe And I Lord. believe, and I'll tell you this, you love, you I know you do not have the, the most accurate translation of the Bible. How do you know that? Because I know that in the closest we have period from any group, not just you, but any church, any religion right now, the closest they feel we have are five translations out from the original words of God. What does that even mean? Five that means, translations out? That means that the King James Version is not the direct word of God. Right. It means that the the Catholic saw epistle is not the direct word of God. Even the Pope doesn't have the direct word of the God. The Pope doesn't know world. anything about the word of God. Let's not talk about the Pope. But what any, we have is, what we any have is, religious religion. It doesn't matter what religion. So we don't know anything about Jesus then, do we? We know we know some. What do we know? We know what we know about him. How? How do we know it? Huh? How? How do we know it? Because we've gone back in history and found things to correlate. Like what? To. Huh? Like what? Well, we correlate to the Bible that we have. Different writings. The Dead Sea Scrolls. Dead Sea Scrolls We've don't have anything back. to do with the New Testament or Jesus. They were way before Jesus' time. We've gone back, though. Yeah, but it still gives us what we have for God. And we still can go have back. nothing to do with Jesus. They were, they were way before Jesus' time. What I think you're doing is you're, uh, yeah, you're conflating several Jesus. different concepts to try to dilute confidence in the Bible. That's no, what you're doing. I'm just saying because you don't love the we, Word of God. Don't love the Word of God? That's right. Then I will blindly believe it no matter what? I'm educated enough to know we've got the fifth translation out. That, but Even that doesn't make best, any sense. Even at the best, they feel the fifth translation from the original translation. That sentence. The original has no that sentence has no meaning. Right? It has every meaning. You're Explain wanting to have the word of God that you read on a cell phone be the absolute. I'm telling you, it's no closer than five translations. So what does that you mean? You go to, it means, go out here, we've tested it in society time again. You write one sentence down and give it to somebody and you give it to five more people and they are, each one turns around and tells the next what he just read. And I guarantee you, by the time you get five people out, You've got a difference of sense. Are you, you talking about textual thing. transmission? You're talking that about transmission. Anything. Hold, on. Anything. Hold on. Are you talking about transmission of the Greek text? Or Not are you talking Greek about text? translation Trans of the Bible? Translation of anything. Anything we make, know that people that doesn't don't make any sense. People don't translate the same thing. The ESV five times, the Bible, ten times. The Bible that I just showed you takes the Greek text and translates it to English. That's one translation. Not five. Yeah, the English text. One. But I'm saying there were five translations. Translation of the Bible, the original writings, before you even got to the Greek text. No, no, there have been hundreds of translations from the original. Since then, yeah. No, and before as well. And before as 
well. There are translations well, from the new, from, of the New Testament we into Syriac five. and Coptic and, uh, and Latin and all sorts of other languages before it ever got to English. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that English came from them. They were translated from Greek to Syriac, Greek oh, to I'm Egyptian, not saying to English. Greek I'm to not English. Saying, I'm not saying translated to whatever language. I'm just Rick, that's what translation know. means. Rick. I'm just saying we know that no language, no Bible, nothing we have now is in the original no. word. Because we don't have the original word. We, we do word. have the original. It's in Greek. It's not in you Greek. You can look at it at blueletterbible.org. not in Greek. Yes, but it I is. Look again. Rick, what makes you think it's not in Greek? Because they didn't even speak in Greek then. But the Holy Spirit inspired it in Greek. And plenty of people spoke Greek. Paul spoke Greek. Afterwards. Paul spoke Greek. Luke spoke this Greek. This is not the language. Paul spoke Greek. And what language did Jesus speak? Aramaic. Aramaic is not Greek. I know. And God is before Christ. God no. speaks not Greek. Christ is God. God's not before Christ. Christ. Is Christ God, why yeah. did you say he's before Christ? Because I'm just wondering how far you're going to go with that deal. I think that you actually didn't know. No, Rick, I, I, honest, I, I honestly think that you well, are you trying to inflate. Well, you actually think what you want to think. You're trying to inflate your image to me. I'm not going to trying to look like you actually love the Bible when you clearly don't love it enough to believe it and hold to it consistently. You're right. I do not believe the current Bible enough to love it and hold it blind faith. You're absolutely right. Good day, my friend. Good nice day. Talk to you. Have a good day.